When you think of black fishing, a few classics typically come to mind. You have Nikita Dragon, the YouTuber TikToker, getting spray tans that are like 16 shades darker than Minecraft Obsidian. You have Ariana Grande filling the words between her ears with A-A-V-E. You have Kim Kardashian getting her blonde hair braided in ways that you would have to be stupid not to realize are Sheehan knockoffs of actual African-American hairstyles. Black fishing's nothing new. It's been around and it's only being proliferated more and more with each passing day, it feels like. But I have come across the most insane case of it that I've ever seen. Um, it, it There's so many layers to this. It's, it's wild. And we'll get into it right after this quick break. All right. I'm sure you've seen like those, those dudes that will walk around with like a milk jug full of water, like a, a bucket, like an actual bucket filled with water to like hydrate throughout the day. That's like their, their mind is in the right place, but it's a little excessive. When you can use something as easy as a liquid IV, it's a little thing you put in your water that hydrates you two times as fast. It's, uh, it's, it's freaking packed with vitamins, baby. It's got three times the electrolytes of leading sports drinks, and it's made with quality ingredients and delicious flavors like sea berry, strawberry lemonade, acai berry, guava, passion fruit, watermelon, strawberry. They got it all. Um, and I just, and I just chugged a whole bottle, so. I don't know if you can hear it. It's like sloshing in my stomach. Anyways, get this. Real people, real flavor, real hydrating. Grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code DRAMA at checkout. That's 20% off anything when you shop better hydration today using promo code DRAMA at liquidiv.com. Thanks for sponsoring. I'm going to go drink you later. (laughs) Yes, I am Liquid IV. Okay, (laughs) That that got a little weird. Let's continue. I'm going to show you a picture of a TikToker named Izzy. Here's Izzy. From just the perspective of someone who is half Indian, I looked at this woman and thought to myself, that's an Indian woman. That is just an Indian woman with really dark skin. And, you know, I would have scrolled along until I read the rest of the TikTok that I saw and realized that this is an Indian woman that has been passing herself off as a black woman. But furthermore, as as crazy, as wild as that is, furthermore, passes herself off as a whitewashed black woman. So her whole content is um, basically her saying that and, and showing that she, although has dark skin, is in a sense beyond being black and uh has like a white boyfriend listens to country music all of this stuff but she isn't even black to begin with she is indian now you might be wondering how do you know this like what where's where's the evidence the tiktok that i saw showed like family photos of her with like her parents indian straight fucking indian like (laughs) it is insane now i'm sure there's a lot swirling through your head through your head right now like why 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 would someone do that and have it be so layered like why why is this person like three different races and cultures it is insane and i've been like really stewing over this i've been like pouring my brain trying to figure out what would compel someone to do this and i think i've i think i've kind of cracked the code a little bit so as i mentioned before um black fishing is nothing incredibly new um for example there was this woman named rachel dolezal you might remember the name she was this uh person that worked for the naacp uh which is like an organization for black people and she was white but not and fully disguised herself like a like a team fortress 2 spy As a black person, she had her hair curled. I believe she got, like, a tan and claimed that she was black. It was very notorious. I was, like, a lot younger when it happened, so I didn't, like, really understand it all. But I was like, damn. And also, another example is Mindy Kaling. She's, like, an actress from The Office um, and then went on to create the show Never Have I Ever. Her brother. Her brother. She's a brother named VJ, which 
Oh! <laughs> On one hand, your name is VJ. Why the fuck did your mom name you after a vagina? Two, that's just a very common Indian name, I feel. Um, but this man wrote a book called Almost Black. I'll just read this article real quick. Um, He claimed that he pretended to be a black man after believing certain medical schools practice affirmative action policies that give black students an edge in the application process. He said he shaved his head, trimmed his long Indian eyelashes, and used his middle name Jojo in an attempt to pass for black. His application also stressed his time spent in Africa where he and his family lived before moving to the United States. Uh, gulp so i want to break down i want to try and like get to the bottom of this and none of this is meant to be justifying any of these things because it's absolutely fucking bonkers like fully truly just the most unhinged thing you can do but i think i've like gotten into the psychology into the minds of why people do this and i'd like to break it down for you as an Indian person who is the most whitewashed you will ever see because I'm part white, I understand where people might like get to a point where they just go shopping for cultures. And what I mean by that is if you get to a point where you literally have like no culture, you might feel compelled to just steal someone else's. It's it's classic a classic story of envy. Someone has something that you perceive as valuable, you want to steal it. And so basically, I grew up in like a very... Um, my school had maybe like two or three other Indian people, and they were my cousins. Sorry, three other Indian people. Two of them weren't my cousins, and one was like this random person from, like, a different Indian family that just stumbled into rural fucking Alberta, Canada. Um, so, you know, I had, like, I, I was still connected to my culture because my grandparents and my dad were from India, but um, my dad moved when he was very young, and my grandparents uh, pretty much, I, I, this is, like, a conspiracy theory, but, like, I think my grandparents were, like, very much on the wave of whitewashing our family so that we could like integrate into Canada more because when they moved to Canada this was like the 60s and it wasn't like the happy little diverse place that it kind of markets itself as it is now um this was like they moved into like a predominantly white town in the middle of nowhere so in that case I think like whitewashing was a little bit of a survival mechanism um if they were to just like be the first Indian people that these white people in this town had ever seen i don't think it would have gone over that well but what my grandparents did is like pretty much give all my uncles and aunts like the whitest names possible um i'm not saying like karen and stuff but think of synonyms for karen and that's like what my uncles and aunts names are not my uncles my aunts names are uh they have like very white names um they came from a uh, Catholic part of India. It was like a Portug Portuguese colonized area of India. So they were already Roman Catholic. So they had that box to check. Um, so we're very whitewashed. And me especially, because I'm half white, uh, when I was little, dealing with like getting bullied for being Indian um, kind of drove me away from, you know, like really claiming that as my heritage i wasn't like bringing like traditional indian food to lunch i'd have like a fucking lunchable stuff like that i wouldn't like tell people that i was indian and to this day i still i feel like i, I made a whole video about this um but like i to a lot of people i'm just kind of racially ambiguous like i feel like people look at me and they're like well what kind of brown is he um so it's it's given me the perspective where I can I can almost see maybe why this person, this girl, the, the Izzy, felt that this was like a thing to do. Now, when I say I'm whitewashed, I don't think I've ever had the desire to, you know, fill that hole, that like missing culture or that um, the culture that I was, like, trying to get away from as a kid. I've never, I never felt the urge to fill that with a completely different other culture that 
I am not a part of or a race that I am not consistent of biologically. But it made me think, why is it that so many times that there's like black fishing or just any culture being stolen in general, it's white people? And I think the answer is because white people don't really have culture. And by white, I mean like white Americans don't really have culture. If you're from, say, Sweden or something and you have a culture, that that is a genuine culture. You have your freaking, uh, you have lingonberry sauce and elderflower and midsummer and Lego and Minecraft. Like, you have all those things. But if you're a 10th generation white American, you really don't have a culture. Now, obviously, there's like some stereotypes, mostly negative ones, um, being like, like white people come three hours early to the airport, things like that. But other than that, there's no real like cohesive binding thing that all white people have because the for one thing, they're like an amalgamation of so many different white countries um, when they came to America. But that means that a lot of these white people end up shopping for cultures. That's why you see so many like white people wearing like feather Native American feather headdresses at Coachella. Um, why you see so many white people like <laughs> becoming like full on weeaboos and absolutely becoming like obsessed with Japanese culture. And like I've seen like I've heard cases of like random people in like the middle of like Alabama changing their name to like a Japanese name just because they saw it in like an anime. Um, shit like that. And it's like. If you don't have a culture, I think there's this, like, urge sometimes in some people to just snatch another one. So, maybe that's what happened with uh, this Izzy girl. I don't know. Who's to say for sure? But let, let's get into more of, like, the lore of how this happened. So, a as I mentioned earlier, she would make a lot of content of being about being a whitewashed black person. And... There was already, like, a lot of comments about that being, like, girl, <laughs> come on. <laughs> like, but there was also, I think, like, some, there was some comments, like, a little bit speculative being, like, black? Because you look, you look very Indian. And as they said in this article that I read about Mindy Kaling's brother, Indian people, um, although their skin can get very dark, um... They're not, they have, they don't have the same facial features. Indian people, um, it's, it's not even something that I really know how to describe. It's like, you, you just know if you had two people that were the exact same skin color, but one was African American and the other one was Indian, you would know which one is the Indian one just because they have like, like we have our eyes, uh, the eyelashes are longer. Um, I don't know. I feel like it's mostly in the eyes. I, I, don't, I can't, like, get too deep into that. I'm not, like, a fucking anthropologist or something. I can't even say the fucking word. But, you know. And I, I knew right off the bat when I saw this person. So, like, when I saw all these people shocked in the comments, I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. So, what blew my mind the most is that this happened in 2023. I feel like this is something that you could get away with pretty easily like pre-social media this really feels like getting in the mind of a killer like this feels like a true crime but the crime is like fucking black fishing but um i feel like this is something that maybe this izzy would have been able to get with get away with pre-social media because you know if you're with someone in person you you can fucking say anything you could just it, it, in in the case of izzy Maybe some people would believe it, and it's not like people are going to, like, go... Like, the average person isn't going to dig through your family photos somehow and, like, find pictures of your relatives and be like, you're not, you're actually not. But we're in an age where, like, if you become an influencer and you're trying to, like, lie about your race, people are probably going to be able to find compelling evidence to prove that you are not that race. Now... <laughs> there was like a little bit more kind of um discussions taking place so um i didn't actually know this until like 
literally a few years ago, but there's like big populations of like ethnically Indian people in the Caribbean um, in places like Guyana and I believe Trinidad. Uh, and these are also places with large populations of black people. So there are like these places where, you know, potentially someone is half Indian, half black, something like that. So people were like speculating, oh, well, maybe she's that. But there was all these comments, um, and I don't know what the source is, but they're like, no, no, she's she is from India. Her family is from India. Like, the if the Ancestry DNA swab came back, it would say Indian. So, uh, I, and where her account is now, I believe her account is banned. It's, like, gone. I don't know if she was banned or if it was taken down. But uh, another crazy thing is she was saying the N-word, which is so wild when you literally are, like... It's, it's, it's one thing to, like, like, be completely not, like, black passing and say it, and then it's another thing to claim that you are and then start saying it. Like, somehow, like, she thought she could, like, print off an N-word pass and say it herself. It's, it's mind-boggling. And we'll get into more on that right after this quick break. Today's sponsor is Liquid IV, you salty dogs. I'm not trying to sound, sound like Michelle Obama here, but... We need to drink our seven glasses of water a day, which is not the easiest thing in the world. I very much struggle every day to drink like seven cups of water, which I think is like the recommended amount. It's hard. It's really hard. But thankfully, I like to use a little cheat code that I'm going to share with you and it's called Liquid IV. Okay. It is um, a delicious little stick that you add in your water, a delicious beverage, a potion, um, and it hydrates you two times faster than regular water. It has all the vitamins you need, baby. We got B3, B5, B6, B12, vitamin C, everything in there. And it comes in delicious flavors like sea berry, strawberry lemonade, Concord grape, lemon lime, pina colada. Pina colada, sorry, I forgot there's an accent on the end. Um, and it's it's a really good way to just like stay feeling good. It's crazy how much like being hydrated helps you feel. Um, but Get this, real people, real flavor, real hydrating. Grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code DRAMA at checkout. That's 20% off anything when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code DRAMA at liquidiv.com. Thanks for sponsoring this. Let's continue. Now, when I was going through the, the Izzy discourse on TikTok, I saw this guy say that this has got to be, like, a mental illness, like, some form of, like, racial dysphoria. Because I don't think anyone in their right mind would ever try this, would, like, genuinely try this. I think you actually have to be a little bit off in the head to claim that you are a completely different race and follow through with it, whether it means, like, darkening your skin or talking a different way or sounding a different way and it's just so mind-boggling to me it truly is because i've seen this shit firsthand um i grew up around like a lot of south asian people and it's almost like sometimes there's this horrible mistake made where you think just because you're in you have like a similar skin color that grants you access to, you know, like the culture and maybe the pain and suffering that other cultures have gone through that has like created slurs. And you think you can like say those like that is it is a fallacy. It's not like you have your own culture and you can never change that. Maybe if you're like those people that like move to India and like fucking do yoga for like two weeks and like namaste and then end up like moving there and like living there for 70 years then maybe you can adopt that culture but you can never adopt a different race you will always be the race that you are born as and i'd really love to see like studies or something because i do think there are people out there that think they are a different race and like cannot accept that they are the race that they were born as um i i think i've really fucking seen videos like this like 
uh there's that one dude who got like plastic surgery to look like a k-pop idol and like thinks he's korean like shit like that i think that's a very real thing i I don't know how common it is but i think it's a very real thing that some people just cannot accept that they are the race that they fucking are which is so crazy because like you genuinely cannot change that like there i don't think there's like the the dude that i mentioned that changed his uh like got the plastic surgery to look like a k-pop idol um which was fucking insane too like it's like think of every horrible like what what's it called um like every horrible eh, what is the word it's escaping my brain like misconception stereotype every single stereotype about just asian people in general and that is the surgery that this person got it's like fucking it's crazy um but yeah like i feel like it's not talked about like that there's people out there who if given like the money and the resources because obviously plastic surgery is expensive would change their race where they'd be like skin bleaching and this like has like undertones and like more broad society like within a lot of asian countries like india um i think even like in japan here a little bit uh it is common to see like uh, skin lightening products and i don't know if that's so much like wanting to be white or it's more so i've heard that like i I believe it's like in india um like having fairer skin is like seen more as like white collar and having darker skin is seen more as like blue collar like you're working in the sun outside so like i think there's that aspect to it i don't know if it's actually like trying to become like a white person uh but and i ugh, okay i know there's probably like someone out there thinking like okay well what about um what about whitewashing what about like uh people of color um wanting to become white is isn't that problematic yes but like in a different way i would say i think it's problematic because you are like annihilating your own culture which if it's not like white culture it's probably like a beautiful rich storied history that you're abandoning um which i've done firsthand because like as a kid being bullied for like being on the darker side and like being one of the only indie kids in my school it it made me like want to stray away from it also just to go on like a quick little tangent um i I always feel like in a weird place talking about like my indian heritage in terms of how it pertains to like society because for the vast majority of people of color living in the united states they undergo some form of like discrimination on like the low end like maybe just like jokes being made about their race and on the high end like actual fucking hate crimes um and this is gonna sound so weird it's not like making it the fucking olympics but there are some cases where i think indian people have it a little bit better than other other like cultures and races and what i mean by that is you look at like things like representation some of the like highest paid CEOs in the tech world and also just like CEOs in general in America are Indian. Like if if you're looking at like through a representation lens, Indian people have got it fucking covered. Like that is that's not anything I think that we got to worry about or have to stress about. And then obviously there's the more heinous things that come with like discrimination like for example, when 9-11 happened, I know that a lot of people were just demonizing, like, literally all brown people. Um, like, probably anyone from, like, India to fucking Morocco, like, l- people were, like, demonizing. Uh, so, y- back then, I'm sure there was, like, it was a lot more hostile. But I don't know that Indian people suffer, like, the same challenges as, say, like, how... Chinese people were being attacked during the pandemic when they were, like, being pushed in front of trains because people thought they, like, started COVID. Like, things like that, I don't know that, like, I've ever had to personally worry about. And I know I'm coming, I have, like, a different perspective, too, because I'm half white. So, like, when I'm more tan, 
like in the summertime, I'm more Indian passing. When I'm in the winter, I look like fucking mayonnaise. So there's that. But it's just, I don't know. It's so nuanced and it's so interesting. But obviously, like for the most part, Asian people have never experienced like slavery or anything along those terms. So that like to just fucking look at black culture and think, oh, I'm going to take that. What? It's bonkers. It's fucking bonkers. So to wrap up like that whole (laughs) the whole the whole thing of it all. It's overall, it's just really sad because like as gross and disgusting as it is, I just see this person who's like so fucking confused like, to not even feel comfortable in your own, like, culture, and your own race, that you have to take it upon yourself to s- steal someone else's. And, like, to go so far as, like, like defending it, like, I cannot believe that, I mean, I, I guess she's, like, gone now. She's not on TikTok anymore. I don't know why. Like, people are saying it's because she's banned. But there was videos of her um, replying to comments, like, speculating that she's not black. And she's like, do you need to see a DNA test? Like, to not just, like, admit it is fucking crazy. Like, if I was that bonkers and tried that and someone called me out, bye, I would be gone like the wind. I would be, like, living in a boat in the ocean. So overall i'm just really curious like it's such a um i i first of all i want to hear from like indian people if you're watching this hello my brothers and sisters my cousins i'm curious how you have you've ever felt about like whitewashing and if you're any any form of asian just let me know because i know it's a very common thing throughout like a lot of asia um the concept of whitewashing let me know like if you've ever had like your own personal experiences with it um just in general, like, anyone, just share your thoughts with me. Comment it down below because I'm very curious. Uh, and let's get into the drama for the week. All right, this week's drama comes from Sally. If you want me to read uh, your drama, to give my two cents, to give advice on it in a future episode, just comment it down below in, like, one or two sentences, por favor. Um, and I'll read it. I'll give you my thoughts. Uh, Sally says, so basically I dated this guy for a month and we broke up because he ended up being a kind of player, but we're still on decent terms. Now he broke up with his new girlfriend and he's crying to me about it because apparently he has no one else to talk to. Also, she did the same exact thing to him that he did to me and I don't know how to feel about it. Any advice? I think it's, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I think it's a good and mature thing to do to like be at the very least like formal not that's not the word civil civil with your exes and people that you've like had flings with or situationships i don't think just because a romantic relationship doesn't work out you need to like cut off all contact that being said what he's doing like coming back to you crawling back and like crying saying he has no one else to talk to that feels very much like wanting to start something up and as much as i believe in like it's good to be civil and acquaintances with people that you're once romantic with uh that that does not include like the possible that closes the fucking door on the possibility of having a romance again okay the y'all broke up for a reason the case is closed so i would say maybe like distance yourself a little bit be like hey buster Sorry about that, buddy old pal, but I'm not the one to talk to about that. You're going to need to find someone else. Maybe not as harsh as that, but um, maybe, like, distance yourself a little bit. That that would be my my thoughts on it. But anyways, I'll see you guys next week. Um, Love you very much. Please rate this podcast five stars if you enjoyed it. And if you didn't, I'm going to cry. Um... Uh, Oh, and subscribe to the YouTube video version of this podcast. Just search up Drama Mama on YouTube. Okay, see you later. Love you. Bye.